I started my photographic journey back in 1988, shooting landscapes and people. My landscape education was really the work of Don McCullen, but also the technical books of Ansel Adams. And while today most of my work is focused on street photography, when it comes to this time of year, I spend a great deal of time wandering up and down the northwest coast where I live, shooting seascapes. Earlier this month, Leica Photography International awarded one of these images with a Leica Master Shot. On this particular day in October, the autumnal sun was very low in the sky and the light was quite harsh. And this just forced me into shooting silhouettes and luckily there were a few people on the beaches to make some interesting pictures, but there was nothing that I hadn't shot a million times before. We decided to head back to the car and as the light was fading, just for a split second, this scene appeared in front of me. The shot was one of the last photographs of the day. I had enough time to take four shots before the light faded, but this was the best one. And for me, it's the position of the people, it's the light and the mood. These are the things that really appeal to my eye. The shot was taken, as always, on my Leica M Monochrom with a 28mm lens with a yellow filter. The first thing I'm going to do is crop it. I want to get the horizon line straight and I also want the horizon line to sit uh, halfway into the frame. I'm going to crop a little bit off the left hand side just to emphasize the two figures on the right a little bit more and I'm just going to adjust the horizon line so that it sits halfway through the frame. I want the top half of the frame to have as much emphasis in the photograph as the bottom half of the frame so I'm just going to do that is about there which is cool. The tonal range in the image is a little bit on the flat side and that's because Adobe apply their standard monochrome profile to uh, Leica M monochrome images. So to get around that the first thing I'm going to do here is change that to my profile P32 which can be found in my silver chrome profiles and presets pack and that immediately is looking a lot better. I want to adjust the sky. The sky is a little bit flat. It can be a bit more dramatic so I'm going to create a sky mask I'm going to decrease the exposure, increase the dehaze, and I'm also going to increase the whites a little bit as well. And I can bring exposure down a little bit more. There we go. Now it looks a bit weird as it hits the horizon line here. So to get around that, I'm going to intersect that mask with a linear gradient. Hold my shift key down on the keyboard and I'm just going to bring that gradient down. If I want the sky to be a bit more dramatic, I can just decrease the, the amount of um, gradient. I can shorten the gradient if you like. Now the guys here on the right hand side are looking a little bit lost in the frame. So to deal with that, I'm going to go to masks again, create a new mask. I'm going to create a radial gradient and I'm just going to put those in the center of the gradient, make the gradient follow the line of the coast here where, it, where the beach meets the, uh, the steps. And then I'm just going to increase the exposure just subtly, Not I don't want to do too much, I don't want it to look like I've just painted on an area within the frame. Now I can do that with the exposure and I'm also going to increase the white and also the shadows a little bit. And that's looking really good. I'm just going to zoom in and make sure that I haven't lost their detail on their faces. No, that's all good. And as you can see, they're starting to stand out a little bit more in the frame. I want to address this area here, so I'm going to take a, another brush. And I don't really mind if it intersects with any of the masks I've already made. When we dodged and burned in the old traditional analog darkroom, we used to get areas where you'd have one area of dodging bleed into another area and so on. And that all made the image have a lot of life. And I, I'm quite happy with that. 
So I'm just going to increase the whites here. I don't want to do too much else. And that's starting to come together really quite nicely. Now, if I zoom out to 25%, I can get a better idea of the how the image looks. When you zoom into the fit section, you tend to concentrate on just one part of the photograph and don't get any idea of what the overall picture is going to look like, particularly on a large monitor. So I often will drop into 25% and just periodically check to see what's happening. Now I can see immediately once I've done that, that um, it needs a lot more contrast. Now I can do that several different ways. The way I like to do it, particularly within these kind of landscapey images, is with the color grading wheel and just deal with the midtones, the highlights and the, the shadows. Now if we click on the shadow wheel, we can use the luminance slider to make the image flatter or have more depth in the shadows. So I'm just going to drop that down a little tiny amount. It doesn't need much. Same with the highlights. I'm just going to increase the highlights a little bit. And then with the midtones, we're going to give the overall image a lift. Now the real magic happens when we use the balance slider because with that we can now change the relationship of the adjustments we've just made and we can have some really fine tuning of the overall contrast of the image and I quite like that there, I think that's really quite nice. Now while I'm at 25% I can immediately see that this area here needs to be darker so I'll go back into fit, I'll take a brush and I'm just going to make that area a little bit darker and add a bit of texture in there because it's uh, the steps there and I like those to be emphasized. There we go. And come back to 25% again just to double check. And that's looking really quite nice. Probably a little bit more contrast is needed. So rather than go back into our um, color grading things, I'm happy with how far I, I took that. I'm just going to use one of the other tools which I like to use, which is the tone curve. I'm just going to increase the highlights. Okay, and then decrease the shadow areas. Not too much, I don't think. There we go. And that's the old school tone curves that we used to use back in the day when we first had Photoshop. Okay, I need to address these dust spots in the sky. So I'm going to zoom into 100%. Now before I do that you can see immediately what's happened here as I've zoomed in. We've started to lose the the faces within that um, adjustment that we just made. They're starting to uh, lose a little bit of detail. So let me just address that a minute. Small brush. In fact what I could do here is I could just go into create mask, um, go to objects and just paint over those two there and it should mask that. Right, I'm not worried about this bleeding. I just want that highlight. So let's go into our highlights. There we go. And we've immediately brought the detail back in their faces. Great. So I'm happy with that. So let's go up to the sky and deal with these dust spots. Now, as of time of recording, I'm on Lightroom Classic 12.0.1 and the retouching tools are in a different league to anything else that Lightroom have ever done before. And they're so good in fact that I don't have to go into Photoshop to actually do any retouching, particularly of dust spots. And that's a huge time saver because I used to spend a lot of time in, in uh, Photoshop that retouching dust spots in skies. But uh, this new version of Lightroom is fantastic. It's a few clicks and it's all cleaned up and it's done. Just double check the whole image. Okay, that's done. And as you can see, it does an absolutely perfect job. Just missed one there. There you go. Fabulous. And the last thing I want to do is just add some grain. Now the grain can slightly soften the image a little bit, so I'm just going to double check my contrast. And I think that's pretty much done.